Hello there and a very warm welcome, quite literally, to the very sunny European Parliament in Strasbourg. Summer is here in Europe and as thoughts tend to holidays and getaways, 15,000 18-year-olds from all around the EU are getting some good news that they've been picked to receive a free interrail pass to allow them to discover four European countries between now and the end of September. The project is called Discover EU and the aim is in the name to get young people out there discovering and better understanding their home continent. On today's programme we'll be finding out a bit more about the project and asking two MEPs whether free holidays really do hold the key to European integration or are they just a free holiday? We are joined today by Vice President of the European Parliament, Dimitrios Papadimoulis from Greece's Syriza and the European United Left Group here at the Parliament. Thanks for being with us. Thanks. And from the European People's Party, uh, the Secretary General in fact, uh, that party came up with the project, MEP Antonio Lopez, who is with the Partido Popular in Spain. Hello. Hello, how are you? Thank you very much. Thanks for being with us. Now, uh, our correspondent, Alex Le Bourdon, has uh, been uh, the lucky person who was chosen to go out there and have a look at this project and see what these free holidays look like. Uh, she's hopped aboard the project to find out a bit more for us. In just a few weeks, Maria won't need to go through this automated machine to buy her ticket for her holidays. The young Belgian has been selected for the Discover EU programme. Along with 15,000 other people aged 18, she will get a free interrail ticket this summer to travel across Europe. It's a great initiative. It gives uh, young people a chance to explore Europe because you hear about it, it's Europe, but there's so much in Europe, you don't really know all about it. And it's just an adventure of a lifetime. You get one chance to get it and I got it. So it's a unique experience. It's the European Parliament who came up with the idea. Despite budget cuts due to Brexit, there's no appetite in the European Commission either to cut corner when it comes to youth. The first phase of Discover EU this summer will cost nearly €6 million. Euros. There is no better way to discover Europe than travelling and learning about geography. The train helps you understand distances as you can stop when you want. And it is also a way to meet people, learn new cultures, speak other languages. This September, Maria will visit Sweden, Austria, Romania and Greece. It's her first trip alone without her parents. She's a tad apprehensive. It's testing your independence, your ability to solve problems, your planning skills, everything. It's going to be a real big personal challenge. 100,000 applications were received for 15,000 interrail passes, but a second phase will be launched this autumn. There we go, that is uh, the Discover EU project in a bit of a nutshell from Alex Le Bourdon. So uh, first question to both of you, perhaps to you first, Antonio Lopez, seeing as your European People's Party came up with this project, free holidays or something more than that? I think it's more than that. In any case, it was our initiative from DPP, but uh, also we have had the comfort of receiving support from other political families, but because we all understand that the need to approach youngsters and, and the European ideal and the European project to them starts with things like this. Uh, it's not only about vacations or tourism, it's also cultural tourism. There are many, uh, I already have found some youngsters in Spain which unfortunately did not have the time to arrive to get some of these tickets for this year, but okay, this is good news because then next year I think that we will amplify this. But it's also a cultural exchange. There are many, 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 many youngsters from little towns in my country in Spain or from Greece or whatever that now they can visit North European you know, capitals and uh, visit cathedrals, museums. It's, uh, I think it's such an interesting because today I think that the young generation is much more motivated than we even were in this cultural exchange. So let's give them the opportunity. Dimitrios Papadimoulis. I think that this, this is a very positive initiative and in the right moment because we have the rise of Euroscepticism, of a lack of coexistence, of a lack of knowing each other. Mm. European Union is a multicultural project, multilingual, uh, multi-ethnic, and we have to know each other if we want to respect each other and we want to co cooperate deeper. Uh, and I think that from that, 
we will have an additional value in the European unification process. Isn't enough, because I know that there was a double demand than the um, reserved tickets, but that gives a signal that it was something good mm -hmm. and we have to continue on that. And we have to, to have a stronger budget with more people, uh, more money for the young people, not only supporting their uh, travels during the summer, but also supporting our, their efforts to find a job, a decent job, and to have a more social and open Europe. Mm. Well, it's interesting you bring up the subject of jobs because uh, both of your home countries, Greece and Spain, there is still very high youth unemployment in these places. A cynical person, which I sometimes have to be as a journalist, might say, OK, free train tickets, some travel, all of the things that you've just said that are positive, but realistically, these people might just go home and there are no jobs on offer where they can use all of these things that they've picked up during their travels. Mm -hmm. Is it just a sticking plaster? Well, I think, I mean, uh, what we have, to, what we need is not, there is not a relation. We have to give opportunity to also young people. Also, we have to concentrate out of the experience next year, how to target also people that they don't have the means to do these kind of things. This is an opportunity not to find a job. Mm -hmm. It is from someone from a small town who has never come out of this small town in our countries to travel around, to see the world, to see Europe, and maybe, you know, have some experiences. This doesn't mean but he will be also open-minded mm. and maybe in the next future he will be also, he will get the ambition uh, to travel abroad and he will have the opportunities also in the question to lose the fear to go to other countries to obtain a job. Mm. This is a humble opportunity uh, that uh, it's being, you know, offered. Let's see how it works, but I am positive about the result. Uh. Well, it's interesting you say about people going abroad to find jobs because in Greece I know that there's actually been almost too many young people going abroad to find jobs. We're talking about a brain yes, drain. And, and I think that we have to give solutions also to that problem. Mm. So I think that it's important also to spend more money from the European budget mm. about the youth initiative related with creating jobs for young people. Mm -hmm. We have to find ways and sources in order to strengthen the cohesion policy mm. uh, and better distribute the cohesion policy because it's good for a Spanish uh, young uh, guy or girl or a Greek uh, girl or boy to find a job in Germany mm -hmm. but it could be much better to find a job in Greece mm -hmm. so it is important to rethink about how the cohesion uh, budget is distributed because mm -hmm. if you take as an example from the existing uh, uh, reality how the um, budget is distributed among the member states uh, related with innovation, 88% goes to the rich countries mm -hmm. of the center and of the North uh, Europe. Mm -hmm. Only 11% in, in the European South, including Spain, Italy, Portugal, Greece, etc. And only 1% to the Eastern Europe. So I think that it's a good opportunity, this um, initiative of Discover EU, to rethink about changing a lot of things because I think that the basic idea is that knowing better each other, traveling around, we could combine forces in order to deepen our unification process. Well, there are thoughts about other initiatives as well that could be done. Uh, indeed, uh, Manfred Weber, the head of the European People's Party, who came up with this, he says that he would like this extended to all 18-year-olds around Europe as a sort of an 18th birthday present. Um, also in the discussion, the the idea that languages come into this as well. Uh, back in the UK, where I'm from, there's been discussion about the fact that a lot of young people don't tend to speak foreign languages and that maybe limits their access to European culture. Is this, uh, Antonio Lopez, somewhere so, where Europe could so step in? So tourists from the United Kingdom will not come to Spain? <laughs> um, two million British tourists will not come this summer no, to, because they don't people, speak Spanish? No, 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 in terms of people having a European perspective. No, there's discussion no, about this no, playing it's not into a question the... of language. 
I mean, it's a question that we have to give, you know, I mean, we have a young generation that is now questioning many things about the European Union. Mm. They don't give it for granted, like maybe our generation gave it because we and also our fathers knew about the war. This young generation, they don't speak, I mean, now it's a debate about frontiers, but this young generation needs something else. Mm. They are, this is the new technologies generation mm. and they have to find new things in this European Union that they have to be attracted by. This are, I repeat it, humble approach. It's not the end of the job, so it's not the job creation solution for mm -hmm. the European Union. It's not the translation solution. It's just giving them an opportunity also to get to know around, free of charge. I think that I, I see the positive things about it. Is it also perhaps a moment where Europe is perhaps waking up a little bit to the fact that Europe has perhaps been bad at communicating about itself Absolutely. for quite a long time? What yeah. do you think? Yes, I think that it's not only about communication. Of course, we have to better communicate the good things that we do. But the crucial challenge is to do more good things. Because you are not doing only good things. We are doing, as a structure, also bad things. Reducing, for example, the European budget uh, about 10% for mm -hmm. the coming multi-annual uh, period uh, in terms of cohesion policy. And when um, Manfred Brever presented his idea to expand that initiative, I told him, answering from uh, my side, that it's a good opportunity to work together in order to increase and not decrease the European budget. Mm. Because uh, only Jesus Christ could have uh, create miracles doing more things with less money. Antonio Lopez. <laughs> No, 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 yes, and uh, you see, in this kind of initiatives, we even are parties that we are in a different political mm. spectrum in Europe and in our countries, we are joined together. Mm. This is also, you know, a sign that we are agreeing in that we need this kind of initiatives. This is good, and we have to regain young people for our cause. Mm. Uh, they are a little bit lost. That probably for our fathers or grandfathers, peace was enough mm -hmm. as a motive for our cooperation but for the young people isn't enough it's they no. were they were they were born in a peaceful continent more or less mm. so they they want job yeah. they want respect they want they want decent um, uh, work and they knowledge. they want uh, hope they want prospect and a lot of things mm. uh, in the real Euro european union doesn't like to them, but there is a danger, the danger of the far right populism, which is promoting the idea of going back yes. in the nationalistic approach. The most recent, very big example of a, a move towards a more nationalistic approach, the Brexit vote, vote in the United Kingdom. The age bracket that voted the most massively to leave the European Union was not the young people, they seem pretty convinced. It was actually the oldest age bracket. So projects to encourage European cohesion among young people, we're seeing agreement among you that it's very good. But what about the people who's a bit older and they think, oh, you know, I'm not you seeing know, what I want from Europe. You know what has worked best for the European Union? Erasmus and low cost flights. Right. People are traveling around. People are traveling, are seeing, are beating prejudices that my colleague, <coughs> the Vice President, is very well stating, mm. that are being profited by the extreme right in many European countries. And they beat this kind of prejudices, you know, Spanish people from little towns that they have never been outside of Spain, they discover that they, the Swedish are not Vikings, <laughs> that the British are not so weird, that the French are not our enemies. Excuse me, these people that are not in our bubble, mm. These people that they have not contact with the European reality and exchange, mm. these are the people that we have to focus in. I have to say that we are facing now a deep crisis mm. in the European Union, in the leadership of the European Union, about the refugees. But having reduced the refugee flows almost 95% mm. in comparing with the 2015. Mm. And, yes. and it's, it's a pity to have countries like Slovakia or Poland not having refugees and having the refugees as a danger in uh, their political agenda. So we, we have to know each other in order to communicate better.
All right. Well, some positive messages there from both of you. Thanks very much for joining our debate. Before we round off the programme, we're just going to get our weekly check on some fake news about the European Union. Uh, this time we're talking about a report that came from France. A migrant benchmark? That's the marketing slogan recently used by several politicians to suggest that migrants are totally in control of choosing their host country. But this eye-grabbing headline ignores the reality of the situation. Among the 172,000 migrants who reached the Mediterranean coast in 2017 in a desperate situation, many are real asylum seekers, fleeing persecution in their homeland. In fact, since the migration crisis in 2015, the secondary movements from the country of arrival to another European country are not as high as many think. 155,000 transfer requests were submitted last year, whereas 709,000 asylum requests were registered in all. The asylum seeker cannot easily choose one member state over another in search of a generous welcome and social assistance conditions. So-called asylum shopping does not reflect the reality. The Dublin regulation states that the first country in which the migrant arrives has to process its asylum application. It is therefore extremely difficult for a migrant unless the authorities fail in their mission to choose his or her host country. If migrants do have preferences for some countries of the European Union, they are often for linguistic, cultural or family reasons. But it is wrong to suggest that these people, already in a difficult situation, are able to choose their destiny. In the same way that a company will do comparative studies before launching a product on the market. And that's it for this week's programme. Thanks very much for being with us. Thanks also once again to my guests from Spain, Antonio Lopez, and from Greece, Dimitrios Papadimoulis. Thanks to both of you. And we'll see you again very soon, I hope, here on France 24 for more editions of Talking Europe. We'll just Visited, presented by Stuart Norville. Transnistria, a Russian speaking enclave in Moldova, where Romanian is the official language. A breakaway republic living in the shadow of Moscow. An uncertain future has driven locals away from the separatist province. The international community has not recognized it. The economy is depressed, censorship is widespread. Transnistria and its capital, Tiraspol is increasingly caught between Europe and Russia. Revisited on France 24 and France24.com.